Eve. Welcome back, fuckers, to Banging with Chloe Beach. Thank you so much for tuning in, whether you're walking your dog, whether you're visiting your ex-boyfriend, or whether you're on your way to your best mate's house because she's crying her eyes out over some dick. I am here bringing you some of the best guests to talk about sex and dating, and I'm really excited, right? I'm really, really, really excited. Like, I've been buzzing to show you guys and to, and to talk with this woman. She is smoking hot, right? Smoking hot. She's a boxer and she is an OnlyFans fucking superstar. And if you don't know her, get to know her. It's Elle Brooks, everyone. <laughs> I said, expect everyone to cough. I'm a bit shaken off. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. It's like, it's it's like, like that, royalties it? here. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> um, yeah, thank you for having me on. You're I'm welcome. So thank you so much for coming on. I know. I'm excited for this podcast because this is a sexual one yeah. so I'm excited to get my teeth stuck into it so thank you for having Good. me you're welcome it's one of my favorite things talking about sex and dating it's actually crazy that I actually get to talk to other people about it that are on my same wavelength because normally I'll like start talking about it in front of guys or like random people and they'll just be like what the fuck you weirdo I know like people say like you've got no filter and it's just like no it's just me yeah I want to know, and I'm really interested, right? Because yeah. we always do a banging or bust. Yes. What is banging from your week or bust from your week? Just so us and the audience can get to know you a little bit. Oh, okay. Um, so, um, oh my God, I had a good in my head and then I forgot it. Bad. I had sparring um, like four days ago and I just cried. <gasps> <laughs> I don't know why, because I spar with her. She's world champion, Ebony Bridges, but... Um, Fucking hell. Yeah. No wonder you cried. Yeah, I just cried. I've sparred her so many times before, and I think that she's, like, fight-ready. Like, her fitness levels are insane. And um, I've just come back off, like, a three-week holiday. I'm dead inside. Yeah. So we're completely two different sides of the camp. And I just cried after the second round, and everyone is just kind of <laughs> like... <laughs> and I'm sobbing my heart oh, out. No. Like, <laughs> and then Mark, my trainer, was like, all right, carry on. So I'm like, carry on the rest of the sparring after five minutes. Like, <laughs> oh no. <laughs> because you can't like let it down. I think it wasn't the fact of the sparring. It was like, I was on my period. I felt oh. unfit. I started to panic. So then I yeah. lost my breath. I mean, you've just literally come back on fucking holiday. Yeah. You're in that relaxed vacation mode. And now you're getting banged out with this girl sparring. I know. I mean, and you were on your period. I know. I think just a mix of emotions, but I just can't believe I started sobbing. I was like, I oh got this is so. Oh, maybe I'm not meant to box. No, no, don't doubt yourself. <laughs> don't doubt yourself. Some of the videos that I have seen, and I mean, everyone. I think you're not rebranding your name, but now mm. you're known as yeah, like you box. Yeah. So you're clearly good at it. Well, we'll see. Like, hopefully I can get another fight and I can redeem myself because my last performance wasn't um, the best, in my opinion, but change of opponent and everything like that, it mm. was difficult. Um, so hopefully my next fight, I don't have one yet lined up, yeah. um, will be um, the redemption. Yeah. And the hopefully, redemption. hopefully there's no tears. <laughs> don't. Imagine if I just <laughs> cried. But um, I said to Mark, I was like, I'm actually really worried that I'm going to cry in a fight. Like, this has never happened before. And he was like, listen, in your one minute break, you can cry as much as you want. <laughs> <laughs> and then get back in there. So the only thing I'd be thinking is that at least it will go viral. Yeah. So at least it would go viral. Do you know what I mean? I know. At least I'll be memed and my OnlyFans will pop. But yes. boxing, maybe not the grip off. Probably but not. But just OnlyFans forever. <laughs> yeah. Woohoo! I'm just trying to think of my banging or bust for the week. Um, oh, banging. I started watching Queen of the South and it's absolutely insane. To anyone that hasn't watched it, go watch it on Netflix. It's amazing. I don't really like watching series. I don't really like watching that much TV, to be honest with you. But... I thought I'd give it a try. My brother recommended it and um, I'm absolutely obsessed. I mean, yeah. you have absolutely blown up on OnlyFans. I, I just, I've got so many questions. I just want to know all yeah. about it. How did you get into it? What is mm. it like? The pros and cons, the dark sides, the, the high life sides. You'll have to remind me of like five of those questions I after will, I yeah. answer the first one. I just want to answer all of them. I'm like, crap, what was the first one? But yeah, I think I've been doing it since I was 20. And I started, well, like in the sex industry, 
doing premium Snapchat, like, yeah, look at me, I'm selling pictures, like, just of my body, like, without my face in it to start. And then I started showing my face then with, in a month, like, every single fucker in my hometown knew. Like, everyone I went to school with, and, you know, like, girl was a bitchy, and I get yeah. it. Every group chat knew, and I was like, ugh, you know. At the time, it really bothered me. But looking back, I'm like, you made me, congratulations. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah. So, yeah, and then I started OnlyFans because I remember this girl DM me and we started speaking and whatever and she was like, I made 10,000 a month dollars on OnlyFans. I was thinking, holy shit, 10,000. Fucking get me some of that. That's a quarter of a mortgage. Yeah, I know, literally. They're probably, you know, houses up north, that is a mortgage. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> so, um, so, yes, then I just started to do that. Um, and then, obviously, with premium Snapchat, it's a one-off fee, so, like, $30 or £30. I've never heard of premium Snapchat. It's not a thing anymore. Is it it's not? It's like the ice age, right. yeah. Right, OK. So I, feel like, I feel, like, so old at 24, but it's, like, <laughs> it's just not a thing now. OK. Because it got more difficult. Uh, they delete your accounts and everything like that. So, oh, right, OK. Um, yeah, then OnlyFans was born. And then I did it way before lockdown, but since lockdown, it's, like, oh, so yeah. normalised. If yeah. anyone starts on OnlyFans, I was like, oh, fair she gets her baps out yeah whereas you know when I started it was a bit more stigmatized but I'm glad it's become more um like generalized like ex- yeah or like accepted I mean I feel like there's always going to be stigmas around certain subjects like even me talking about sex on a podcast there's certain stigmas attached to that or men or and I'm like you're one of them women that are very strong-minded and you've pushed through that Do you know what I don't give a fuck about what anyone thinks of me I'm going to do what makes me money and what makes me happy and what I want to do. Yeah, I think it's something you learn on the job, though, because, like, baby, 21-year-old, 20-year-old me was just like, like I just want to make money. And then you think, you know, with hate and everything else, you think, fuck it, I want to be the best version of myself, you mm-hmm. know? Yeah, definitely. Do you, did you know, like, obviously, did you go to... You went to school. Yeah. When you come out of school, was it like, what do I want to do? Like, what was that pinnacle moment for you that kind of push you down the road of, do you know what, this is what I'm good at and this is what I want to do? Yeah, so I uh, was doing a law degree and I was in my second year in University of Southampton. It's like a Russell wow. Group Uni. And I was like, um, I was doing OnlyFans at the same time. And I was thinking, fuck me, this law degree is way too much reading. Like, do I even <laughs> want to be a solicitor? Like, solicitor is like, they get, don't get me wrong, they earn a lot, but you, you know, you have to work through the ranks. So you have to work bloody hard. Mm-hmm. Like, even though I do work hard now at the time, I was making like 30 grand a month doing the bare minimum. Mm-hmm. I was thinking, why am I reading books? Like, I can actually just go do OnlyFans. Literally. Because this was like 2019, um, like September, like when it first started, uh, uni first started that I dropped out. Does that make sense? I think so. Yeah, like when uni started out. Yeah. Of the year, the beginning yeah. of the year. When yeah, it, that's yeah. why I dropped out. Yeah, okay. so that's what, like three years ago now. Yeah. Wow. So you've been doing OnlyFans now for f- four Four, years? like four, no, three and a half. Three, three and, and a half, half years. Wow. Yeah. That's I know, crazy. veteran. Oh. So you're like a professional. Yeah, I'd like to You think. know what you're doing? <laughs> I'd like to think so. You know Sometimes what you're doing. I'm like, oh my God, I'm the worst OnlyFans model ever, but you know. Oh, don't it is what it is. Everyone beats themselves up. From someone, because I know that there's going to be a lot of people listening that are either considering starting an OnlyFans or have just started an OnlyFans account. Like, what advice and tips would you give to those women that are looking to start in getting a career in OnlyFans? Yeah. The pros and the cons, or like, you've grown your OnlyFans account. Yeah. And obviously, you're the one that's had the experience going through certain trials, tribulations, and all of the situations and stuff on OnlyFans. Like, what advice would you give? Um, starting off. Starting off. Um, social media is your best friend. Like, obviously, it's an online platform. And it's like, you're not going to be perfect straight, straight from the bat, you know? Like, you, there's going to be things that you need to improve on and you need to learn and grow. Like, once you have your TikTok deleted for the first time, it fucking sucks. Get back up. No one's going to do it for yourself. Do it again. I've been through seven Instagrams, eight TikToks. My my Twitter got suspended for six months. So it's just um, learning also what you can get away with and within, like, Mm -hmm. the guidelines that, you know, people still know what you do, but you're not outright like, oh, you suck the dick on TikTok because you can't do that. But <laughs> yeah. people still know, oh, she's a sex worker, she has an OnlyFans. So it's yeah. driving traffic indirectly. Um, yeah, and just know yourself and your boundaries because, you know, I think people sometimes grow too quick or they're like, oh, that's what so and so is doing. I have mm, to do that. Yeah. But you don't. There's so many successful girls that don't even show their vagina. Mm. So do whatever you're comfortable with. And Definitely. The 
Like from starting three or four years ago now from your OnlyFans, was there like a limit and a boundary list that you put in place that throughout your time on OnlyFans, you've gone, oh, actually, do you know what? I'm just going to push that boundary aside because I feel like it's more acceptable now. Do yeah. you feel like there's certain pressures from OnlyFans that have, have, I don't know, made you feel like... I don't know how to word it. I pushed myself. Yeah. Like, like, like do done. you feel like you've... you've, Because for me, if I compare it to an experience that I've had, so I know that if I post a bikini photo on Instagram, it's going to get plus 100K likes. I mean, 100,000 likes, right? If I post a picture of me in a tracksuit, it's going to get less likes. Yeah. So, like, certain boundaries that I've now said to myself is, do you know what? I'm going to stop posting bikini pics just because I know I'm going to get more likes. Because yeah. I don't need to seek that validation. Whereas with you, have you implied that within the beginning of your OnlyFans? Like, right, I'm not going to show my vagina and then later on down the line gone, do you know what? I feel like I kind of need to or um, have you always had that healthy boundary? I've always had a healthy boundary because I've always been a total slag. Like, I'm not oh, going to lie. It. Like, my body count at 14 or 7. Like, it's just, like, it's always been within me. Like, I was at school making sex tapes with my partners at the time. Like, it's mm -hmm. just, obviously, I don't sell them now, obviously. <laughs> um, but I, it's always been within me. Like, if you ask anyone I went to school with, like, out, like, Oh, we're going only fans are fucking no shit. Have you fucking met her? Like, <laughs> you, oh, met her? you know, like all I've ever wanted to talk about is sex, and it's my favorite topics. And I've always loved men. I've loved women and everything. So, um, to me, I've not pushed myself. Don't get me wrong. I've done things I regret. I'm um, like done tapes with certain people that now are. Oh, I can't even look at them. They make me mm. feel sick. And obviously, once something is on the internet. It's permanent, so yeah. I'm never going to get that back. And even if I don't sell it on OnlyFans, it's been ripped off by stream sites. Yeah, or, you know. Um, so they're kind of boundaries that have been... Because I weren't I'm like, oh, I'll film with this guy because it's a quick buck. But mm -hmm. um, just because I'm like, yes, content. Like, but not in terms of, like, showing my body and, and everything yeah. like that. I've always been open, but... So it's almost like hindsight with the types of people that you've previously recorded yeah. certain content with. Yeah. yeah. But there's, like, two people, like, two guys. For anyone, I haven't even stepped, like, with that many guys on camera that I'm just like, oh, oh no. no. Yeah, what is it Disney. that gives you the ick? Is it just, like, looking back at it? <laughs> if I say some of the things, it's just going to bear give it away. <laughs> oh, no, OK, we've done that. <laughs> yeah, you know I mean, this one guy... Oh, he, oh, I don't even care because it is what it is. But, so he had, like, really long hair and it was really long and greasy. So he's on top of me and his hair is, like, all over my face. Like, bearing in mind, the camera's behind here and his hair is just over my face. So you can't even... You, you can see... And he kept doing this face into the camera whilst he's fucking me, like... Oh, no! Oh, not oh, the face! No, why are you doing that? People aren't there to watch you. Not the face! Uh, not yeah, the face! Oh, no. Like, he would literally, like, be pounding me and then look in the camera like... Oh, oh, oh no, I can't. Oh, I even why did and he's like all big and muscly, right? And I even I've never actually admitted this because like, if he sees this, it's so obvious. <laughs> I'll send you a pic later and you'll be like, wow. Oh my god, okay, <laughs> right. That is gross. Okay. And um, I think I've made quite a bit of money in it over time, thank God. But um oh I even I even labelled it like having sex with my PT on oh. OnlyFans. Ugh. Where do the captions come from? Is it just like people's kinks that you know are kinks that you're just like, do you know what? Yeah. Yeah, I think they're just like whatever's relevant, like in terms of like it just the comes people. Out. Yeah, like you can to be honest, I don't actually do that much role play. I probably should. Mm. Um but yeah, like to whatever, like if you're if you just got like the same tape, like, you know, there's so many videos of me shagging. Yeah. How can I spice it up? Oh, so I did do once a delivery driver. That was quite fun. Did you? Yeah, because I got like the kit off eBay. <laughs> They're probably going to... Can I get sued? <laughs> what for? Like impersonating delivery drivers. No, I don't reckon. <laughs> like, they're not going to be like, right, you're, like, you're, you're impacting the brand. It's slander. And, like, <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, I was just... Um, Imagine so he... that L Brooks gets fucking <laughs> cancelled no. by post office. <laughs> <laughs> Postman, I should do that. But I literally bought the whole outfit, even the, the like food delivery box. <laughs> and so you went full in, out then? Went full out and it was just in my... And then I did like this whole skit of like me being like, mm, I really want a Papa John's or whatever shit, like on my phone. <gasps> wow, me opening the door. That was one of my good ones. I think I Pepper don't, Army. I know, literally. Imagine if I put his cock like within like the delivery box. That'd that be that cool. would be an amazing surprise. I know that would be really like, good. Like just put a hole in the bottom of the pizza box. 
And then I, and then just do I have to sit on it? It's like a glory hole. And then you open it like, oh, I really want a slice of pizza. <laughs> and then it's actually dick. Oh, it's really? like, oh my God, this is amazing. <laughs> Stop See, it. porn is so fun because you can have so much fun with it for me. Like, it's just like, men will watch anything. Like, I've been like, no makeup on, in the shower, <laughs> hung over, looking like a right crackhead. And people are like, oh, you're so fucking hot. I just want to spunk all over your face. Love, oh my God, yes, I love it when you're natural. <laughs> you know, like, they love anything. Like, the, the videos you make, within five minutes on your iPhone sometimes we do better than the ones where you like try to do a yeah. setup. up well, it's relatable isn't it yeah it's exactly. relatable it's, it's like realistic amateur. amateur I love it I mean what are the I've always been interested what are the the weirdest requests that you have had on your OnlyFans I get such weird like weird requests all the time like it's just kind of like you know when the novelty wears off and you just don't really think yeah. they're weird anymore but, um, I mean, I think some of my, some of my kinks or not kinks, I don't know, like not fetishes, but so, some stuff that turns me on, I think is quite weird. So maybe not weird. That's the wrong word to use. Like the ones that kind of took you back a little bit when you see it and like open your eyes to like a new world. Um, honestly, I'm so unfazed by everything. Like people, like you know, when people DM me like literally about incest, I'm like, that's fucking gross. <laughs> Like, I'm being serious, like, Are they especially asking? weirdos. Like, do you want me to go in my mum's panty drawer and, like, sniff them? I'm like, you're fucking oh gross. Oh, my God. Yeah, or just, like, weird, like, belly buttons, like, sweat. Like, imagine you can think of, like, the weirdest things. And I think, Joe, you know when you just get, like, I'm so immune to it because I've been reading this every single day. Mm -hmm. It's like, hey, you love, just, how are you? It's, like, different. It's, like, I want to piss in a cup and drink it. You know, you've just desensitised yourself to it. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. Um, my ex was actually into pissing. I never let him piss on me, but he was like, oh, yeah, um... That really turns me on. Yeah. I remember that our first time we spent in a hotel together, I went into the shower, <laughs> and I'm such a weirdo. I pissed in the shower, I and, I, and I was I put my hands on my hips, <laughs> and he come into the bathroom, and I went, "Woo!" Were you drunk? <laughs> no, I don't drink. <laughs> That's what makes it even more weird. I was full on fucking sober. Pissing in the fucking shower, going, woo! I, did he get right hard on? He, I could tell it turned him on. <laughs> and I was like, you like pissing. <laughs> and he went, what was do you this mean? before you know? No, I don't. Yeah, I didn't oh. know. This was like our first date. Oh, wow. I love the boldness <laughs> of it. Yeah, that makes it sound really intense. Yeah. Yeah, first date, went to a spa, pissed in the shower, woo! And then um, a few weeks afterwards, I was on a walk and I really needed a wee. And I ended up going somewhere and um, he, got, he, got his, he got his phone out and I was like, what are you doing? And he went, oh, it really turns me on when you wee. And I was like, oh God, okay. So you created a porno then. And like, <laughs> but it was almost like it, it wasn't weird, but it just took me back a little bit. I was like, oh, right, okay, now you're opening up this world to me that I could Yeah. Do. I didn't know that was a thing. Yeah. I think when a men wants to, like, do you know, when they pee on you, that's a little bit degrading. Like, yeah, no, I wouldn't let that. Do you know, like, some, and also they have to, it's really hard with a boner. Yeah. Yes. So, like, either they have to do it, like, afterwards, like, once you've come, or I feel like, like... go upside down. But I think it's actually it coming out. Yeah. Because I'm just thinking maybe, you know, if someone done like a, <laughs> I'm just trying to think like a handstandy. If you're, if someone's laying underneath them and you, they put their hands and they're almost like on top, it will bend automatically. No, not that it's hard to pee because it's hard. Like they, it just won't come out. Like it, they can't concentrate on it. I, I thought you, you, what are you I on about? I thought you meant the direction. <laughs> no. Oh no. Like it's just hard to come out. I don't know if it's because the body's like, no, stop, come only, please. I'm so like, sorry. I don't know. I've just envisioned like an eyeball towel. <laughs> I'm like, no, I reckon that would work. Like Imagine two hands, like oh. pushing it down. Like everyone, quick, <laughs> hold the fort. <laughs> Oh my god, imagine if I was into porn. I, my imagination is just wild. I actually love it. Oh my god. Swiftly moving on. <laughs> um, what videos of yours do you think do the best? What videos of mine? Uh, the ones with the like top porn stars. Yeah. I worked with J Mac. I'm not actually spoke about that Who? like three weeks ago. J Mac? Oh my god, no he's, way. He's so do you know who that is? No. No, I didn't think you did. I was I was just about to ask. Oh, You're like, pretending, aren't you? Like, oh, I'm gonna ask her who that is. Yeah, so you have Johnny Sins, which is I think he's 
mainly Brazzers. And then uh, J Mac. I did... know what Brazzers is. Yeah, so Brazzers. And then J Mac was always uh, Reality Kings. Okay. Um, and like different productions. But like, um, I think Johnny Sins is the most famous because you always got memed for astronaut, firefighter, and everything like that. Okay. But J Mac's probably like, like second mm -hmm. in terms of like men and porn star rankings. Wow. And his dick was so big. It was the only dick. I've never been able to deep throw, and I certified. I mean, you've got a nickname, haven't you? You nicknamed yourself, or you the goat throat. The goat I, throat. My throat is insane. Like if I said, like, like I hand hard, like hand on heart, like, like there's such a bold statement, but wow. I can suck dick, and this was not budging. It was like the thickness. I was just like. I was like, even to my cameraman, I was like, that's never fucking happened. <laughs> I look like an amateur. So, was you? Have you got a gag reflex? No, no, no. Did you get it taken out? I got my tonsils taken out, but I don't know. I don't think you can take a gag reflex. Because you know out. what? I actually, go I actually googled on my. I actually googled it. I'm not even lying because I've been sick on a few dicks. Oh, I did that once when I was 14. I, I had a full tub of Pringles and I, I went down on my boyfriend and I put it in and I, I am just, I'm not nowhere near pro, baby. Yeah. I am. I'm proud of you still. I'm proud. Thank you. <laughs> no, but you know what? I tried because I'm so selfless in bed. I'm like, I want to help them. So I put it in and I was sick. So I Googled the next day. Yeah. Can you get your gag reflex taken out? But you can't. I think it's like um, like a genetic thing. I think probably you could train it. I do think you should like, lie to people sometimes, like, oh, my God, I got them taken out to suck cock. To make it look really sexy. <laughs> I know. Like, I went through every length to get the best head. Oh, God. But, uh, no. I wanna... did, NHS did it. Thanks, NHS, for my only fan's <laughs> giftedness. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God, I fucking love you. Do you know what? There's one porn star I would, oh, my God, I would just indulge in. Lana Rhodes. I know, she's retired. Oh, oh my God. I know, she's so fit. And she's getting fitter. Like, sorry, it's, like it's not allowed. She's just had a baby. You're enough. <laughs> and she is just beautiful. I just, I just it, I'm speechless. Like, without makeup on as well. Yeah. Like, she's insane. Like, and her the eyes. Bod. I know. Where's the stretch marks? I Riley Reid's just had a baby. Who? Riley Reid. Who's Riley Reid? Uh, she's like really petite and tiny, like brown hair, cute. And she's yeah, yeah, dicked yeah. by like the seven biggest monster cocks I've ever seen. Oh my I'm God. Like, Bitch, I'm like, wow. How did you do that? Like, What's the biggest dick do you reckon you've ever had? Um, To be fair, I say J Max is the biggest, hardest dick. Because like... Because some of them can be growers and not showers. Some of them can, but some are softer than others. Like sometimes, like they're like probably like this big, but it's softer, so it can bend, so you yeah, can throw so it. Yeah, it really hurt. But yeah. when it's really hard and straight, it's just like, eh. oh my god, yeah. Yeah, I do like like the bigger and the more it hurts. I'm like, yeah, gives you that drive. <laughs> yeah, no, <laughs> ow, believe me. <laughs> I know, literally. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, I'm loving it. <laughs> it's fucking. And your eyes are watering, and you're like, <laughs> and I just feel like they're thinking, you're doing great, babe. You're doing great. Yeah. You know what I mean? So. Validation. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Um, <clears throat> you're obviously in really good shape. Do I look at it? Mm. You are, up, like, you, trying to sit up now. Like, you are in really me? good shape. No. I mean, you do boxing. <laughs> obviously, like, your fitness is much better than mine because I don't go to the gym because I'm just, I'm such a pussy when it comes to pain. You don't go... Sorry. You I'm, don't go, like, you're, like, you're just naturally skinny. Yeah, I can't put weight on. My hip bones are bony and my, yeah, I've got bones everywhere that pop out. But I tried to go to the gym. Yeah. Then the next day I'd be walking up the stairs like uh -huh. I'd shit myself. Yeah, it takes a while to wear off. Yeah, literally. Yeah. Does this help? And do you feel like this enhances you whilst you're having sex? Honestly, me on top now. I'm like a fucking cowboy. I don't got so much energy. I'm like, hey, this is because I'm fitter. I didn't even realise until, like, you know, you got on, like, after a few months. I'm thinking, oi, this is not as hard as it used to be. But really? just means, like, every session, every boxing session, it gets easier and easier. But that's just your fitness levels, let alone riding a cock. So now I'm like, I am top tier. Oh, my <laughs> God. Maybe I'll start going to the gym then. I know. Even if it's just cardio, I feel like it helps. But yeah. Yeah, no, because it's like... Like, do you know if you're like squatting on a dick, that's like oh, it burns. Doesn't yeah, it? no, it does. Yeah, like if, like if you've got your knees down and they're kind of doing the work underneath, you're thinking, oh yeah, I'm on top. Yeah, no, I don't mind that because then I'm just like a frog, like I know. <laughs> yes, I'm just in their pounding. face, like I <laughs> know, leaning over. Have you done that trend? There's a trend on TikTok, right? When you put your phone, like 
and then on your on your bed, and then you go over it like this. What? And film yourself, and that's what you look like when oh, you're on top. <laughs> and it's like double chin central. Did you like it? Do you like the outcome? No. Thinking you're on top, you're like, off. yes, I'm so sexy. Yeah. And sometimes then... I don't know where I get the fucking confidence from. Oh, sometimes I'm like. <laughs> but then other times I'm like, oh, I just want to get off. Uh, I see a meme the other day again okay. on TikTok, and it was this guy that was like, "Girls, after being on top after two minutes, ugh, oh, I'm tired," and then rolling over. Yes, yeah. I feel like two minutes on top is a long time. Though. I feel like it. You know, like even sometimes I'm like, say like an eight minute shag feels like an hour. Yeah. Let alone two minutes on top. Yeah. So I feel like that's enough. Definitely. Next position, please. Yeah. Well, when you do like filmed sex stuff, mm. how does that work? Because like, say if you're feeling really sensitive or if you're like, do you know what? Like this hurts a little bit or I've just got a bit of a bellyache. Can we just wait five minutes? Because for me, sometimes I've got to stop se sex yeah. to push some gas out. Oh, I queen full time lie. on camera, yeah. Yeah. When I was with Danny D, I was literally like, he had like a film crew of like three and like him. And I was just like walking around like, sorry guys. Like used to it, especially like the professionals. Oh yeah, definitely. But, I mean, queefing's um, normal. I know. Everyone does doggy. it. Like, yeah, no, it's bound to happen. Exactly. Oh, I get fresh on the regular, I'm not going to lie. Yes. But through antibiotics, not through sex. Oh. Because I've got a really sensitive vagina. I love you, no. Oh, so do you not have bubble baths? No, I can't, because then I get BV. Oh, oh my God, BV stinks. Yeah, oh my it's God. disgusting. It's like, I'll be sat, I remember once I was at college and I was sat on the bus and my friend was like, it really stinks of fish. I full well oh, knew it was me. No! I was thinking, does it? I was mortified. And I once, I saw a TikTok the other day. I keep banging this. That's all right. Um, say, with a girl saying something like, if you, like, other girls can smell your vagina twice as much as you can <gasps> smell yours. You're lying. And then the comment section was like girls saying like, I can smell when another girl has BV. I was mortified. Oh no, I'm sorry. I, I used to get, every time I used to have sex, my BV was really bad. Was and then, it? But when I was like, I'm not gonna say the age. But when I was younger, like I was having sex, not like I wasn't, that sounds really wrong. Um, I was the legal age when yeah. I st first started having sex. That's great. And I remember, <laughs> I didn't know what it was when I first started getting BV. I was like, what is that? Like, what the fuck? And then I realized it was normal. It's just pH balance. Yeah, it's fresh. No, that's yeast. That's yeast. That's yeast. Yeah. But you can get these little capsules that I use after, um, especially like with different guys and stuff, that you put up your vagina after you've had like a cream pie or something like that, and it just makes everything normal. What's a cream pie? <laughs> you no but like when a guy comes in you cream pie and then it comes out yeah, yeah i guess cream pie but i always say when a guy injects at you i don't know if it actually technically has to come out you're making me question myself now well, i don't know yeah but i always say cream pie is just when they've swung to you don't take anything i say gospel because i know nothing <laughs> <laughs> i know nothing literally nothing um one thing that i'm really curious about like when you do a sex scene with someone yeah is it awkward at first? Is there like a stage where you sit down and you have a chat and then you're like, right, these are the boundaries, this is what we're doing, right, now three, two, one, we're gonna get into it. Yeah. Is it like structured or is it just like, do you know what, we're just gonna go with the flow and just let the chemistry take over us? Yeah, so um, it's actually funny because when I work with the guys, like, well, more recently anyway, so we're like, yeah, okay, it's TikTok time. It's like, first thing we do, get into the TikToks, like, smash out the TikToks, which is funny. And it's so funny doing a TikTok with someone that's like, it's going to, like, rail the living shit out of you in, like, yeah. half an hour. Do you no, know what literally. I mean? literally. So it's just kind of a bit, like, nervous, but I love it so much because it's such, like, an adrenaline rush. Like, it's mm -hmm. crazy. But then when you have the sex scene, like, you have to go through, like, what are your do's and don'ts? Mm -hmm. um, it's very, like, respected in that way and then you have to get your STD test up. Like, <gasps> oh, look, I don't have fucking syphilis, HIV, chlamydia, gonorrhea. Like, you have to get, like, your whole tests up and you're like, okay, they're clean to fuck. Um, and then, in. Yeah, it's like, it's, it's weird. It's not like you just turn up thinking, yeah, I'm fucking horny, yeah, come fuck me. Like, it's not, <laughs> it's not quite like that. So, um, yeah, I mean, sometimes you can be, you can choreograph it a bit like, yeah, we start off sucking the willy, obviously. You always start with a little bit of willy. Okay, the little foreplay. A little bit of foreplay. And then you're like, okay, but it's, it's different with everyone. Like, J-Mac was just like... <gasps> like, it was, oh. like, very much in one take. He was just chucking me around everywhere. Right, okay. Whereas sometimes it's just kind of like, yeah, I don't know. I'm not really feeling this. 
Like, and then, like, oh, what did that bits. happen? No, like, you know, like, I've never stopped to see him, but you know, when you need to pause. Like, yeah. I know with Johnny Sins, he was fucking me so hard. I was literally, I don't, I don't know why I was going, yes, harder, harder, I'd love it. He fucked me so hard that I was literally like, you need to come. That's how oh, so I was no. like, yeah, I, it needs to stop. Like, my insides are like, yeah, ruined. I was like, yeah, we need to spunk now. Fuck. Yeah, so. Can you, like, What's the difference between someone that's really good in bed and someone that's good in bed but not at their peak point? Yeah. For, like, if there's men listening, mm. from your perspective, yeah. what would tickle your pickle? Do you know what I mean? What would tickle my pickle? Like, on a porn level or a personal level? I don't really know. Like, whatever you think's useful to them, to the listeners. Yeah, so I guess... If you want to be a porn star, what tickles or pickle? Having a big dick, because obviously in angles, only half of it ever goes in. It's like if it is a smaller dick, it's just harder for, um, you know, because you need to see it go in. So you're, like, it's constantly always out at any one point. So if it's like an average, even an average cock, um, it wouldn't be the best for filming. But um, personal level, just... Yeah, lots of foreplay. I like foreplay, mate. Yeah. I'm like a foreplay person. Us so. girls definitely need foreplay. 100%. Because otherwise it's like, okay, you're just putting it in and out. I know. But I need to feel like some clit stimulation, otherwise yeah. it's just not really doing it for me. Yeah, like I've come, I haven't come and you've come, thanks. You know, I'm gonna get yeah. your time and finish. Yeah. So it's just like, I do like a quickie sometimes though. Yeah. You like a risky quickie. Yeah. Pet out in the car or something. Mm, yeah. I like a risky quickie. That has to be quick though, doesn't it? Yeah, I mean, I've always, oh, I've, I've said this again on a previous episode of this podcast. Like, it's, I think it's overrated. It's good as a quickie, but as, you know, when guys are like, yeah, let's have sex in the car. Then you get in the car and it's like, you you both look so weird because you're like bent up in so many of these different angles yeah. and positions. And like, he's in the footwell and you're like, one leg's on the fucking gear stick. <laughs> and then you're like, what if someone comes past? And like, you get a neck ache because you're worried fucking Steve's going to be walking the dog. No, but I think that's the fun bit. Yeah. Like, no. even if the sex isn't fun, it's like, oh, it's so naughty. It's naughty. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You know, it's just like, who's gonna catch us? So, I mean, that's the fun bit. Obviously, it's very uncomfortable. But what's good is actually sticking out of the car, bending over the seat, and keeping the door open. Say that again? Yeah, so like, say you've got like a car door. Like yeah. keep the car open and you're just bent over the driver's seat. So you're not actually sat down. Yeah. So it's doggy. But then obviously if anyone walks past, they can they can see. They'll you. just see it. Yeah, yeah, they will see everything. Yeah. But actually inside a car, especially if you've got a bloody full fiesta or something. Then at yeah. least you've got the space. Exactly. You've got the wilderness behind you. I know. The, the trees. The wind in the balls. <laughs> it's like windy. It's like a bloody love story, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. We like Taylor Swift needs to write It's like a song about this. <laughs> it's like what do you say Taylor Swift needs to, to write, write a song, song about, about it? <laughs> the wind <laughs> hitting his balls <laughs> outside the car. Cheering <laughs> doggy. <laughs> Could you imagine? Stop. Um you're you're pretty open yeah. about having plastic surgery. Yeah. Just as I got my boobs done when I was 18. I was looking at them, I was thinking, yeah, they look really they're, good. They're fake. I mean they're they small, look natural still, though. They're a small though. fake, yeah. Yeah, they look good. They look... Because I, I was so self-conscious about my boobs when yeah. I was younger. Like, what types of... I know you've spoke about it before, yeah. but just run through it with me. So the surgeries you've had. Yeah. And was every reason for the surgeries that you've had the same reason or were they different reasons for different surgeries? I first got my boobs done. So I've had implants and actually, like, an uplift because I used to be really fat chubby kid and I lost loads of weight and I went from like probably like a double D E to like smaller than a B within like four months so they were like flaps of skin they were really saggy and um I was in the sex industry um like pretty much beginning this was like when I was 21 and I just felt so overly self-conscious about them like do you know and like I've seen comments and like what people say like I can't actually I can't remember if someone directly said it to me but um like said anything bad, but I remember seeing comments specifically about saggy boobs and everything. And I was like, mm -hmm. do you know what? Uh, that's, I want yeah. porn star boobs. Every porn star has great boobs. Mm -hmm. That's something I, I don't have. I'm really conscious. And that was like my first surgery. And mm -hmm. um, yeah, I, I'm super happy with that. And cause they're like, 
they're not too big. They're quite natural. They look so. nice and natural. Exactly. So that's kind of what I wanted. I never wanted it to be like, oh, I want massive porn star honkers. Like, I just wanted them to be mm. bigger. Um, and perkier. Perkier was the Enhance main thing. Enhance the asset. Exactly. Exactly. So this, they're probably even smaller now than when I was, like, a chubby. Mm-hmm. Um, I just held, like, all my fat and my tits. And my bum. So jealous. <laughs> First world problems. I'm yeah, like, they, oh. I was, like, <gasps> everywhere else was fatter as well. Like, it wasn't just, like, okay. just in my boobs. Yeah. Um, my bum. Um, I think I was just like a, like, not a self, I, that wasn't an insecurity thing. Like, don't get me wrong, I didn't like my bum, but it wasn't to the point of my boobs or my vagina. Yeah. Like, it was just kind of like, yeah, I want to be curvy. Um, at that point, I'd given up on my fitness and health. That I was like lazy. I was mm-hmm. like, Do you know what? I will just surgically change and improve my body yeah. rather than get in the gym. Yeah. And then, you know, like, I'm kind of happy I went through that process because I've learned more about myself. But now, if you look at a picture of when I was skinny, when I first lost the weight, and now I look exactly the same. Like, really? Yeah, like, because, like, all the fat they move, like, you lo- lose the fat when you lose weight. So it completely oh, got wow. reversed. And then after, only 45% of the fat lasts, um, survives within, like, eight weeks of you putting it in there. And I wasn't that big as I was before. That's right, because yeah. they give you a bum cushion, don't they? Yeah, they do. And you have to sit, sit on the on bum cushion because weeks. if you don't, then the fat cells die. Yeah, but right? so many die already. It's just like more wood. Wow. Because it loses like the oxygen supply or something. So yeah, so that was like the biggest waste of money ever. And then my vagina was my favorite surgery. Okay. And I don't know why. I've been thinking about getting this done. Big, like, do you know what? Like every vagina is perfect. Don't get me wrong. But like, it's like, and it was just something I was always so self-conscious about. And also th- it's, a, it's a comfort thing. Mm. Like my labia would always rub. Like if I wore lace pants and jeans, it mm-hmm. would rub and it would hurt. And if yeah. I was walking, I could feel it. I was uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. And I've never had that since. And I just think, you know, I don't want to be out here advocating that women should have it done because that's not what my message is. My message no. is if you're unhappy with it, yeah. if you're unhappy with your body and you have the funds to change it, yeah. change it. If that's going to make you happy, do yeah, that. Definitely. And I'm so open about it because I think, like, I never had questions um, mm-hmm. my questions answered by anyone because I didn't know anyone that had it. Yeah. So if I can, if someone wants that done and I can help someone then, yeah, that's definitely. what I want to do. There's always pros and cons to surgery. Andrew. I remember when I first wanted to get my boobs done, I was only a kid. I think I was like 14 or 15. Yeah. said to my mum, my boobs are never going to grow. I'm really skinny. I'm being called a boy in school. Oh. Like I'm getting bullied. Like what's going on? I really want to get my boobs done. And I was obsessing over it for years. Yeah. And it got to the point where I would feel that uncomfortable in my own skin that I, I needed to change yeah. something. 100. And it was either that or wear bloody push-up bras and put tissue in them for the rest of my life. And I'm so mm. glad that I'd done it. And one bit of advice I would give to anyone that is listening if they wanted to change anything about themselves, if they were extremely insecure... Always give time time. Yeah. Because for me, I didn't make a a decision straight away. I kind of had the thought, the seed was planted, and then if it wanted to grow, I would let it grow. And if it got to a point where I didn't grow out of that phase of wanting that surgery, then I would go, okay, I'm going to get it. But I wanted veneers a couple of years ago up until last year. And I've actually sat with that for the past couple of years. And now I'm like, do you know what? I don't want them done. I've yeah. had composite bonding. I don't need veneers. Yeah, when you said that, I was like, don't you already yeah, have Yeah, on my great. top they two, so composite good. bonding. So it's almost like you don't need to change it unless yeah. you sit with it and give just give time time. 100%. Because I was like that with my vagina and it's always something I had wanted done for like years and mm. years. And then I got it done and it's like... Yeah, it's the most rewarding in a sense because mm-hmm. that's something that you know. Yeah. It's like, how many times do you look in the mirror? Oh, well, I, I know I am. And I'm like, right, I need... You know, everyone says I have a big chin. I'm like, fuck, I need it shaved. Mm. I want to go get a chin shaving. Yeah. I want to get a nose job. I want this. And if I was as impulsive that if I wanted that even for four months, which mm. of course I have. Um, it's almost you know, like, like irreversible. It. Yeah, it's irreversible. Exactly. It is. And it, you lose sense of you, I think, when you go mm-hmm. too far with surgery. So it's finding that... Happy balance. Yeah, definitely. Did, did the... What do I call it again? The... Design of vagina. Design of vagina. Yeah. Like, out of 10, yeah. how much did, did that hurt? It didn't hurt because I had a BBL at the same time and a BBL feels like you've been hit my fucking truck. So you got the BBL... And a vagina and done. The, yeah, because wow. I was put under, I thought... At the same time? Yes. Different <gasps> doctors. Different, I, oh, they must okay. have been like, hello, sorry, it's your turn. 
like wiping my legs out. Do you know what I mean? Like in and out, like it's just such a weird um, like dynamic when you think of it. But uh, So you were like black and blue. Like just, do you know what? Just just go for it. I know. And I was already so, and I think it helped that I had a BBN in a sense because I didn't have to, like I was always laying on my phone. I didn't have to sit down. So it's never only like, pressure on Mm -hmm. there yeah so you know it was quite easy is there like staples and stuff that are done that when you get it done or is it just stitching i had stitches but i had quite a lot like a reconstruction on my vagina so i had fat added to the the outer parts the lips okay to make it like more like puffier and then i had a clitoral hood reduction because i always had like a lot of skin like on the top that i wasn't happy with okay because i just wanted it like if I like, sounds stupid, but if I saw Riley Reed's vagina, I was like, I want that vagina mm-hmm. because it's so weird about surgery. You can just pick like out of like a fucking list of a hundred, like yeah, I want that one. Yeah, yeah, and, you yeah. Know, so um, and then I had my labia trim, so I had like three things. So it you was literally designed your vagina. Yeah, hundred percent. If you saw like a before and after, and if I showed you the parts like that have been cut off, you think fucking hell, that come off a of funny. Didn't you keep them? Yeah, and it's my favorite party trick to show everyone. I haven't got them. I should have. You should have been weird if I bought them with me. You should have bought. Your lips here. You, I know. We could oh, have literally kept them have, here. I would have loved. I've having lost your lips the trick. <laughs> I know. Oh, don't they actually look like calamari? And it's so gross. They're like white now. Oh my yeah. god! You just turn up and like, do you want to see my lips? Yeah, and I then know. Just like, trick job. <laughs> but every time I look at it, I'm like, fucking. I like, like one side was always way longer than the other anyway. So like, it was like a big one and a small one. But I'm like, aren't they cute? It's like a fucking snow globe. <laughs> Oh my god, it's like move my wisdom teeth. Oh, did you keep them in a jar? Yeah, I kept them in the jar at home in a cupboard. I and my nan my, my nan came round and was like, Chloe, what are these? I'm like, they're my teeth. They're big. Yeah. That like they're the root on it, Quite don't big, they? big, yeah. I love them. How One, many? Two. Ooh. No, four. You got four out. Yeah, top and bottom all at the same time. I got surgery and I got stitches, and then they were just like codeine, codeine, codeine. How long did that take? Just over an hour. To rip four teeth out. Yeah, and stitch they it. knocked me out though. Oh, they completely knocked me out. Oh, you were put under. Yeah, they completely oh, really? knocked me out. Yeah, it was like a full-on dental had to surgery, surgery. Yeah. Oh. How long did your surgery take? Was it like quick? Um, I think oh, it was maybe like two hours. They, I had mine quite early in the morning. I remember you wake up. After a BBL, my arms were above my head and I was in so much pain. My arms were fine. Because I actually had arm lipo, but it didn't actually work. Because they would literally not like, like, I've still, look how much fat is still in my arms, right? And I've lost so oh, much weight. Stop it. But they can't, with where I'd lost the weight, my skin's really, um, what is it? Elast. Yeah, it lost its elasticity, elasticity compared to someone else. Yeah. So um, they can't remove too much. Otherwise, it would just be like, old like saggy skin yeah so they've still got them keep it a little bit Does yeah like sense? in proportion sort of thing yeah so it's not like still out the like, skin yeah definitely so um yeah my arms were burning and the rest of my body i couldn't feel because it could be an epidural <gasps> did they yes that's so dangerous in it but yeah so i remember like leaning up and like them putting the injections but don't you think the weirdest thing about plastic surgery is i walked myself to the table to be put under yeah, Don't yeah. Don't you just go, okay, yeah. right, I'm going to be knocked out. You just I'll lay out. Lay yeah. there. Like, it's not, you're like, you're sick and you get, like, pulled in. Like, you just yeah. think, oh, right, good night. Yeah, literally. <laughs> and then you lay down and they go, right, count to ten. I know. Knowing that by the time you get to three, you're, you're out cold. I know, I'm thinking, right, I can beat it this time. <laughs> <laughs> One thing that I really want to talk to you about, because it really interests me, and I've always been, because I didn't know I was a squirter until last year. Yeah. Yeah. So I've only ever squirted twice in my life. Yeah. But it wasn't, I, I didn't do anything because I didn't even know I could do it. Yeah. So do you know the difference between squir- squirting and orgasming? I think so because I've done them separately. It's like I can orgasm without squirting and I can squirt without fully having a full on climax. Does yeah. That make sense? So with me, what I'm a bit like. I've seen some videos online, right, where the girls can literally control it and they're like, it looks like they can squirt on cue. Yeah. Can you do that? Mm, Well, the trick in, like, porn is you drink, like, tons and tons of electrolyte and I guess that helps. 
is that technically pissed? I guess so. Oh my god! In that sense, so that would be that. But I can squirt on my own as well. But it's just if you know, right? I want to make a squirting video, then you'll drink loads and loads of like electrolytes, so it's like clear. Is electrolytes water? Yeah, but like there's so I can't remember the brand they use in America, but it's just like they use so it tastes nice as well. Okay. So it like yeah, so it's like tastes so it's like if like, you're working with someone else and they're squirting in your face, you don't think Bleh, it's like piss. voice. Moist, moisty, yeah. moisty. Why is it spicy? Why is it spicy? <laughs> so, um, yeah, you can drink drink a lot and then just, I guess that's technically mm-hmm. pissed. But it looks good on camera because it's like, woo! When yeah. you squirt at home with a bloke, it's not like... No, it's not as much. It's no, just like, it's oh, not. the bed's really wet. Oh, okay, yeah, I must have Yeah, exactly. It's not just like a... So bloke. how do you how do you get yourself to that point of like, right, this is... Because for me, it's like mental, isn't it? Mm. It's like that mental letting go. Letting go. So... Have you got any tips for anyone that are, list- that are listening that would really like to kind of delve deep with that, with their partner, if they were to experiment? Like, how would they get to a point of, do you know what, we're going to try this position, this angle? Because I believe that fingering brings on squirting more yeah. than actually having intercourse does. 100. Because it's like the trigger, it's that yeah, motion, isn't it's it? Yeah, the, it's the point. Yeah, Oh, I don't know, but I do think it. Well, for me personally, like it is like I can squirt easier if I have like clitoral stimulation and fingering. Yes. So I guess it's it's both. But honestly, for a girl, it's like do you know when it gets so intense, like it feels so good. Like I can't explain it, but it's kind of like letting go. Like don't like hold like tense your vagina. Just kind of let it go. Does that make sense? You yeah, know, it you does. can kind of like squeeze. Yeah. Don't squeeze anymore. Does that make yeah, sense? Yeah. See, I'm doing it now. Uh. <laughs> I'm like, am I doing it? Yeah, am I, am I trying to tense for clear? <laughs> <laughs> that was so just let go. Yeah, just let go. Obviously, aside from like the sex work and the OnlyFans and all of that jazz. Yeah. Um, are you a little boxer? Yes. Are you a little boxer? I try to be. I want to be a boxer. Yeah. Yeah. And um, there's a the particular name that stands out. Yeah. Whenever I'd done a little bit of research around the boxing. Yeah. Um, obviously, you were meant to do a fight with Astrid. Yeah. And she doxed you. Yeah. So, like, was that preempted? Did you know it was going to happen? Was she, like, how did that make you feel? Like... You knew each other, didn't you? Yeah, so it was like, um, I think every time I've been on a podcast, I think I've spoke about, apart from one, about how it was all like, um, you know, it was fake. And even after she doxed me, I still, um, the doxing wasn't fake, the the, the beef, mm-hmm. uh, the drama was fake. But I kept that up until my fight because I didn't want to, I just wanted the narr- not the narrative not yeah, to change. Of course. Like, yeah. I can say my story afterwards, but right now I'm focused on boxing and, mm-hmm. you know, but... Now, yeah, I used to go around a house like before we'd um, do the fake fight in uh, Mr. Miyagi's. Um, so I think the thing is when you argue with someone, um, I wasn't necessarily friends with her before, but when you fake beef with someone, everyone wants to win. And yeah. Lines get crossed. Yeah. Um, things go out the window, you know, like... Some I people, can't. some like obviously, some people get sensitive yeah. and say certain things that are like, "Well, hang on a minute." I do think, hand on heart, though, it was preempted. Like she came on that live, um, knowing that she was going to do that because she was like, "Number one, you're lying to your fans. Your name is Crystal. Number two, you're from Portsmouth. It was very." like choreographed yeah. and written out. So I, I like hand on heart think that like she knew, um, mm-hmm. even if it was her manager, James, like or whatever, if it was even her management, like I don't, I think it was probably more them personally mm-hmm. than her just because, um, you know, I met her. Yeah. Um, so do you think it was more like a publicity thing then? Or do you think it was like... Just, personal. Because yeah. it doesn't... I'm not like... Every, what, like everyone it likes sounds very personal. personal. Like it, it didn't make me look bad. I think that's the worst thing. Like it... That was only to hurt me because you didn't damage my brand. Mm-hmm. You didn't make me any less money on OnlyFans. You didn't make anyone unfollow me. It doesn't mm-hmm. make me look bad. You're not getting one up, but you're getting one up in the sense that you know that's going to really emotionally hurt me. Yeah. So, you know, it's, it's like it's a not, sly dig. Yeah, it is. And I think that that, like, um, 
I had kept that that name since, you know, my premium Snapchat names. And then mm. for that to go out like that, when I am on TikTok mm. live, I came off that call. I went straight. I like, I live right by the woods. I went right out to the woods. I went on like the longest walk. Like I was sat down. I cried and I mm. cried and I cried. And I woke up with a text from my manager. Like, hey guys, when do you think we should announce the fight? I thought like, you cunt. Like you don't actually know what you've no. done. Like that's what makes me think. But her and her management, they're not like revolved around sex workers. So I don't actually know if they know the severity of what they yeah. did. Because I knew, I could I could have sat on that live and I could have mm-hmm. been like, okay, your real name is X, Y, and Z. But like, that, that, yeah. I, that's not, what do I get from that? But you didn't lower yourself down to, exactly, to that level. Exactly, like, what, what was the point of that? Like, mm. um, so that's what I don't get. And I have asked my quite, like myself that a lot. So, uh, but it's done now. And I feel like um, at that time, my whole world ended. I thought Elbrook was dead. Um, but she's not no, baby like I feel like with everything you know time goes on and don't get me wrong I still get the old people be like oh, Crystal oh, lol but you know everyone still knows me as Elbrook and I think that's mm-hmm. like the best possible outcome for something that really shitty that happens yeah so. definitely what do you mean everyone has like a an alter ego anyway exactly. don't they so just own it I know. do you know what you're such a lovely person I'm so glad I've had the opportunity to speak to you because you're not one of them girls that's like I don't know, like you're a nice person. Yeah. And everyone, no matter what our professions are and no matter what we entail in our our line of work, we are still fucking human beings. Yeah. And, um, yeah, I'm sorry you had to go through that. No, it's fine. It's like one of those things that I'm just... I'm glad like, I'm over it emotionally because Mm -hmm. back at the time I thought... You know, and, like, even parts of me thinks, like, like... I don't actually hate you. Like you did that. Yeah. But, like I did. Like it's you know so much energy hating yeah. you. Like I just think like sometimes oh, it's you easier. you had to do that. Yeah. Like you can narrate your own beef. Mm-hmm. Like you actually had to go that low. Like yeah. Congrats. Yeah. You know. Like it's just. Um, it is what it is. Yeah, definitely. Now I'm like, oh, Crystal, porn star name anyway. <laughs> ah, I think it's quite a sexy name, to be honest with you. I know, with a fucking K. What the hell? So, with a K? <laughs> yeah. Ooh, okay. She's going on, Mum. Yeah. I always joke with her. Like, I'm like, I, I was made for porn right out of the womb. <laughs> She's like... <laughs> Okay. Mum, you created me, I literally. Know. I used to tell you some people before I was sex worker, my name's Crystal like the stone, not the stripper. God, if they knew. <laughs> Crystal like the stone. Why do I say that? Why is I such know. a bitch? <laughs> Fuck's sake, I'm probably with a C, not a K, I, fuming. I, I, I um, right, what we're going to do now yeah. is we are going to go on to the advice segment. Okay. So someone, one of our wonderful, beautiful listeners, thank you yeah. so much to everyone that sends in their... Um, their dilemmas. If you've got any toxic situations that you want to swing over to our way and you want advice from me and a guest, then please DM bang him with Chloe V Pod or email us. Um, I'm just gonna grab the card and we'll get straight into it. Right. So yes. someone is some of sometimes these these can be a bit wild. Oh, okay. <laughs> so I do apologize in advance. So hmm. oh, oh no. I can I can relate. Oh, okay. I am a girl with a really small bum. My ex-boyfriend shamed me for it. But now I don't mind having a small bum. You go, girl. Yeah, I know. I want to know if you guys think... If you think guys immediately notice a girl's bum and if they think less of her if it's too small, please be honest, do you think it makes me less attractive to guys? Oh. oh my god, that makes me really sad. Oh. Because I get like that. Yeah, I especially know. Especially during like reverse cowgirl, I'm like, oh, they can really see my arsehole because it's not covered by the cheeks. Oh, don't say that. <laughs> yeah. Bumholes are well ugly, aren't they? Yeah, oh yeah. They I've they never bleached my bum. Have you bleached your bum? No, I try it once, then I just don't. Mm. Oh. No. Oh, that's really sad. I know, bless her. But like, I do think guys do a notice. Like, obviously, like, there's a sexual, they're going to look your boobs above. Like, I would say that guys would notice that, but I wouldn't say that it makes them think any less of them. Yeah. To be honest with you, I think it's like... When I look at a guy and he hasn't got any muscles, I yeah. notice he hasn't got any muscles. Exactly. But that doesn't necessarily mean you that I look at that muscles. guy and think, uh, he hasn't got any muscles. Yeah. It's not even like a judgment thing. It's like, it's, yeah. you just notice it. Exactly. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, and most people with small bums are like model-like. I've been yeah. told. That's what my mum tells me anyway. <laughs> most <laughs> people have small bums. It's like normal. Yeah. Like, 
you know, I don't know. I mean, to be honest with you, I think it's in now. I think actually, I think the big asses is reversing because then all the Kardashians get Reverse, their BBLs yes. reversed. So I actually think like there will be like a slight mm -hmm. shift personally yeah. from like the big mega Kim K bumps. Like it is starting mm -hmm. to get smaller. Yeah. Like everyone likes like a perky bum, you know? Mm -hmm. So I don't think it's necessarily a bad thing. Yeah. You know, some people suit their body types so well. Like yeah. it doesn't even matter. Yeah. I've been told if I got a really, really big BBL, it wouldn't suit me so yeah. I need to just accept the fact I've got a small pancake but you know what right one thing because she mentioned in here that um her ex used to shame her for oh. it right now I've had exes try and kind of give me a complex about it because they know that that's my weak point yeah, and they know yeah. that's going to hurt me and they know that I'm going to then kind of shrivel up into my little shell but now I don't have it I'm like, I don't care, I've got a small bum. Yeah, yeah I love it. Good. And I yeah. own it. And I feel like when you take that sense of ownership of something on your body, then it's attractive because they're not looking at your bum then. They're yeah. looking at the confidence yeah, that you've got. Yeah, confidence Confidence thing. is sexy. Yeah. So even if you think that your bum is really small, just mind over matter. Do you know what? I've got a small ass. But I bet your tits are great. But yeah, but, I mean? but I bet your tits are great. Yeah. Just don't. Look at the negatives, look at the positives. And it's coming in, it's yeah. coming in fashion. It's coming Everyone, in fashion. Everyone, you know, like 20 years ago, they would have died for mm. your ass. Listen, Everyone. babe, if you were to give her a pep talk right now, yes. what, pep, what would you say to her? I would say Kate Moss would be proud. Yes. <laughs> Kate Moss loves your bum. I know. And honestly, like, men suck anyway, so. And yeah. I mean, look at his bum. Is he perfect? Hell no. Like, exactly. what the fuck? Make him feel fucking insecure. You're a small dick, cunt. Do you know what I mean? Hey, do fuck you know what? it. <laughs> You said it, not me. <laughs> <laughs> Too, like, do you know what I mean? Like, I know two wrongs don't make a right, but like, there's going to be things about him that aren't perfect. So, like, why should he make you feel insecure? That's just such like, like a mm. shitty thing to do. It is, yeah. It's probably because he's intimidated because you're very beautiful. Exactly. So, I really hope that you do find someone that appreciates your bum. Second. Though. And I'll let you know if I find someone that appreciates my bum. I appreciate your bum. I appreciate your bum. <laughs> <laughs> so we're gonna jump into a game, Elle. Uh, yes. Game. Are you ready? Yes. Do I have to move? No. Oh, okay. Interesting. <laughs> I was like, yeah, air hockey. No. Oh, don't. Oh no. I fucking love air hockey. <laughs> oh. Okay. So it's called "It's Never Have I Ever." Oh, okay. Do, are we I drinking? love it. Um, no. Oh, okay. Yeah, just got the waters. Mate, waters. Yeah. No, that's what I meant. Are we drinking our waters? Um. No, we don't have to. No. Yeah, no. Figure it It's kind of like a never have I ever, but like a Chloe spin. Oh, interesting. Where it's like not really never have I ever, but kind of is. Oh, wicked. Yeah. I'm excited. It's like the Wish version. Nah, yeah. never. Gucci version, darling. Gucci. <laughs> fantasy edition. Ooh, I love a fantasy. Ooh. We're going to take turns saying things we've never done during sex, but that we want to do. Oh. So the other will put a finger down if they've done it. Oh. So. This is something I want to do, but I've never done it. Yeah. Right. Okay. Put, okay. Three. Ah, ah, ah. <laughs> Three. Three, you're right. Right. Three fingers. What do you want to do? Never have I ever. Okay, this is quite, this is quite nice. Oh, nice. Right? Fantasy. Yeah. Never have I ever had sex in the rain, but I really want to do it. The rain? Yeah. I've never done that. Have you not? So I don't put a finger down, do I? No. No, I don't think I have. Okay. No. Your turn. So, never have I ever had sex with more than three guys at once. Like, I want to do that. Oh, I've never done that. Do I, you have to, do I, do I put a finger no, down? No, we keep it up. Oh, okay, no, I keep it up, yeah. No, I would love to do that, like, m a challenge. Okay. I've done two, not three. Okay. Four or more. How would that work? I don't know, just any hell of a girl at that point. Just fucking do it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I got the khaki. <laughs> no. Never have I ever. Oh, no, because I really don't want to do this, but I'm just going to change it up because I can't think of any. Never have I ever done anal and then the dick be put in my mouth. Oh, I don't know. Have you done that? Yeah, I do that quite a lot. Okay. That's kind of gross, isn't but it? But you've douched. Not always. <laughs> 
Okay. <laughs> Sounds like just close your eyes. I okay. Best. Just fucking, just don't eat sweet corn the day before. Oh, no, imagine if there's cake. I've shit on guys' dicks so many times. Oh, God. Yeah, it's awful. Well, it's natural. If you're putting a dick up there, like, you've got to expect that to be yeah, shit on it Yeah, it's going to happen. Yeah. Your turn. Oh, right. Um, all right, I've got to think of one. It's quite hard, actually, isn't it, that I want to do. Um, I never have I ever... Uh, Look. Never have I ever fucked on a plane, but I want to. Oh, I've never done that. I've never done that. I'm not in the Mile High Club. I know. <sighs> Fuck. We've not done love. I know. We're, we're actually all right. <laughs> I thought I was the right yeah. dirty bitch, but I'm not. Never have I ever done role play. <laughs> yeah, I've done role play. That's something I've never done, but I really want to do. Yeah, I've done it quite a lot. It's fun. Sometimes it's just funny. Sometimes I wish it could be like, uh, this is maybe something really fucked up, like a burglar. Okay. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, ah, I'm so helpless. Fuck. Oh, I raped. thought you meant you're Do the you know, one with the no. gun. Oh, like, get on your knees. No. <laughs> like, I was the one just like <laughs> being totally annihilated. But well, fuck it. I think it'll be fine. But obviously, there would be, and have to be like, consent <laughs> yeah no consent boundaries but I put a gun to my head and stick it in my arm yeah I think, oh no not the bum hole oh okay anything no. but the bum hole right now sorry <laughs> like, do you know what I mean like we'd just be like, oh, oh sorry <laughs> but this is a burglar scene I thought we could do what we want no <laughs> um never have I ever fucked a teacher that's always something I wanted oh to do oh my god wait have I <laughs> No, like your teacher. That's what I'm saying. Oh, I no, I haven't. Teach. It was a college teacher and <gasps> I got his number and he was really sexy. He was a... Oh, well, yeah. I didn't know. That's a close call, though. Fuming. That is a close call. Yeah. That's almost... Thank you so much. No, thank you, Chloe. I've had a great chat. I can't believe, you know, it's been like, what, like over an hour now? I know, literally. <laughs> He's just been chatting about shit. Yeah. Vomit. Shit, dick. Sex. Yeah. Boobs. Bum. This. Yeah. Full of it, being sick on a dick. Oh, new Taylor Swift song. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Number one in the chart. <laughs> well, thank you so much. No, thank you. Until next time. I know. Thank you for having Woo! me. Banging with Chloe Beach is part of the Eve Podcast Network and a Forever Dog production. Executive producer, Tracy Soren. Development executive, Mariah Nicholas. Senior producer, Palama Kaufman. Producer, Ewan Newbigging Lister. Post producer and theme song, Brian Hevron Smith. Cover photo by Greg Bailey. Forever Dog Productions is Joe Cilio, Alex Ramsey, and Brett Boehm.